Harris. Rich Edson, thank you very much. Joining me now with more on this, Mark Dubowitz, a CEO of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. He's also advised Secretary Pompeo's team and helped Congress write the very sanctions now being reimposed. Sorry to talk about you in the third person for a minute, but I wanted people to know the importance of why we have you on the program today. So tell me about these sanctions specifically. Do they affect oil? What do they affect? Well, the sanctions that are coming back on Monday are going to affect Iran's ability to attract investment in its energy sector, export its oil, which accounts for about 70 percent of its export earnings. It's also going to affect Iran's ability to access the global financial system, to move money around, to repatriate foreign exchange uh, for its reserves, to defend its currency. So these sanctions are maximum pressure and they're maximum financial pressure. And what does that mean for the people on the ground uh, in Iran? Because they will eventually, as they have in the past, I would imagine, you know, rise up and become part of the conversation again. So they've already actually risen up. Since December, there have been protests all over around Iran. There have been strikes by teachers and truck drivers. And what's interesting is the protests are really the, these are the political base of the regime. These are blue collar workers who normally have supported the regime, but are mm. now on the streets yelling death to the supreme leader, death to President Rouhani. Why are you spending billions of dollars supporting Bashar Assad's slaughter in Syria and funding Hezbollah instead of taking care of us? So the regime is being squeezed by the Trump administration externally and internally by Iranians who are very frustrated and angered by the regime. And is there any reaching out that we would do as this country to those people on the ground? Secretary Pompeo has really had, I think, a, a really robust uh, public diplomacy strategy in really mm -hmm. reaching out to the Iranian people uh, through Farsi language Twitter, through broadcasting, through speeches that he's given, and really underscoring that this is a, a wonderful culture, wonderful people with a great history. I mean, the only place where Iranians don't succeed around the world is inside Iran because the Islamic Republic represses them and deprives them of opportunity. So he's made those points. He's underscored that. That's been backed by the president and others. And I think that messaging campaign is critical going forward. But so, Mark, these things, these reimposed sanctions go into play on Monday. And then as we look ahead to 2019, I've heard you say that things could get worse for Iran. How so? They're going to get worse for the Islamic Republic because the State Department under Secretary Pompeo's leadership hasn't stopped reducing Iranian oil exports. I mean, what he's done is he's carefully calibrated how to take a million barrels off without spiking the price of oil. And he's been mm. enormously successful in doing that. You know, the price of Brent is the same as it was when the president withdrew from the deal in May. So that's quite a remarkable achievement. Going into 2019, they're going to be locking up Iranian oil revenue. So Iran has limited ability to spend it and can only spend it on humanitarian goods. Hmm. And as oil markets loosen, the State Department is, is really committed to taking another 500,000, 800,000 barrels a day offline. So wow. the regime is going to get continue to be squeezed. And on the financial side, Secretary Mnuchin has been as successful in designating banks and designating 700 Iranian entities, 300 more to come, uh -huh. and cutting off Iran's access to the global financial system. That is fine. That, that's fascinating to me because now the question becomes, with all that in play, does this bring Iran back to the negotiating table or not? It's an open question. The Iranians are always defiant until they actually, the day before they decide to come back. We've seen that in the past. I think that the Iranian strategy for now may be to count on their hope that President Trump is a one-term president and wait him out for two years and maybe get a president in the White House in 2021 who takes America back into the deal and isn't willing to be as tough. So that is the strategy. The question is, can they make it over two years? Mm -hmm. And what happens if they're wrong and President Trump actually has six years to impose maximum pressure? They, they, that may be a very difficult strategy to maintain. I, I've always thought like a government agency that you, you know, put in place, it's hard to go back to what previously was there with any government. So if they're waiting out our politics, um, that seems like a fruitless strategy, but they'll have to deal with it because those sanctions are in play, reimposed on Monday. Mark, thank you so very much for giving us kind of an inside look on, on how you've been supporting the Secretary of State on those sanctions against Iran. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for having me.